This is Pier de Alba, Commandant General of the South African Republic, painted by Dutch artist Theresa Schwarzer in 1890. Theresa Schwarzer, who was born in 1851 and died in 1918, was one of the leading European portrait painters of the late 19th century, and this is among her finest portraits. It is now in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. Her subject, South African statesman and military leader Piet Jauber, is little remembered today, but at the time this portrait was painted, he was internationally famous. Born in Cape Colony in 1831, he came as a child on the great trek to the Transvaal, which in 1852 became the South African Republic, one of two independent Boer republics determined to remain free of British rule. Jauber became active in Transvaal politics in the 1860s, rising to serve as vice president to Paul Kruger. In 1877, Britain annexed the Transvaal, provoking the first Anglo-Boer War. Jauber, as commandant general, inflicted repeated military defeats on the British in 1881, securing the Transvaal's independence. He was unable to win the presidency himself, but continued to serve as Kruger's vice president and as commandant general. In 1890 to 1891, he travelled to Europe and North America on a diplomatic mission, and this portrait was painted while he was in Amsterdam in the latter part of 1890. It is dated 15th 16th December 1890 and marked Dingansdag, Dingans Day. This was the anniversary of the Battle of Blood River on 16th December 1838 and a profoundly important day of remembrance for Afrikaners. The dating of the picture in this way aligns it with contemporary Dutch sympathy for the Boer cause. It is a positive portrayal of a man widely seen in the Netherlands as a fighter for freedom. Jauber is depicted seated, but poised as if ready to move into action at any moment. His is a very square figure, square body, square head with square beard, square shoulders. His left hand grips the hilt of his sword. Jauber's figure does not fill the canvas, but, vigorously painted and robustly modelled, does dominate it, standing out against the roughly painted and undefined background, filled in with quick brushstrokes in shades of brown. The fall of light within the portrait gives the upper part of the body and the head and face extra prominence. Jauber's dark blue uniform is decorated with gold braid at the cuffs and collar, red and gold shoulder boards, and a broad gold stripe down the outer side of the trouser leg. These elements give extra definition to a figure that is vigorously, even roughly, painted. He wears a sash of the red, white and blue colours of the South African Republic, and decorations on his breast. These touches of glittering light and colour leap out against the sombre background and are captured with broad, rapid, flickering strokes of the brush. The overall impression is one of power, but also restlessness. At the time Theresa Schwarzer was painting Piet Jauber, his military reputation was secure on the basis of his great victories of ten years before. But ten years later would come another war, the Second Anglo-Boer War, and Jauber, by that time tired, old, and often unwell, would find success elusive and would be criticised for indecisiveness and weakness. Sforza seems to hint at what is to come in the uncertainty and equivocation she shows in his gaze, the slight frown that frames those deep-set eyes. She understood her sitter very well. Despite the military finery, Jauber was always a reluctant soldier. Piet Jauber did not see the end of his second war against the British, dying in 1900 of peritonitis, exacerbated by a fall from his horse.